Hello, viewer. Welcome to the next part of this uh, King Cosma Let's Draw. Um, finally. <laughs> it's been a while. I've been pretty busy, but I finally have some time to myself to uh, continue this series, and let me just see here. So, we did this sketch last time, but off screen I made some changes. The first change I'll go over is I went over the, the head structure a little more, because I noticed that um, from this angle his muzzle would look a little, just a little more sharp towards the side. I believe in the um, the sketch in the first video, his muzzle was a little more round than this. I think I took this eye and um, skewered it a little more. I'm not sure, it's been a while like I said, so I might have forgotten. And something else you might have already noticed is that I added some bandages, different parts of his body. I kind of tore up his jacket a little bit here and there. Just to make it look like he's been through a fight, something pretty intense. Uh, what else, what else? Uh, this hand right here, um, I had the palm facing away from his body for some reason. That's not what I wanted to do. I guess I got confused by the, the stick man skeleton I was doing, but oh well. I changed that, and now his palm is facing towards his body and he's making a fist. I spread his legs a little more because I don't know why, I just can't get it to look right. I'm not sure, you know, I'm sure how to say it, but I messed with it a little more. It looks better, somewhat. I'm not going to mess with it any longer though because you know, it's just taking too much time. I also changed the look of the shoe as well, I think, uh, at least along this side. Tongue of the shoe, I think it's called. Correct me if I'm wrong. But um, I also do this little background here to get a good sense of the perspective you know, from this from this view. And this little symbol here, I'm not sure if it's accurate to um, whatever the martial arts uh, tournament or competition was in the movie, but I'll look that up and probably just make changes in the next part. In this part, we're going to do the line art and the base coloring. So it's very self-explanatory, not much to talk about honestly, but my line art consists of making long strokes, long fast strokes pretty much. I don't do it like the sketch where you just do very short strokes and just try to get the structure in line. Yeah, line art, line art's not too hard for me, and I make a habit out of keeping my fingers on the Control z keys because I do um, use the undo function quite a bit because during the line art I do mess up. Uh, I don't have a very steady hand, so sometimes my line will go too far off in the sketch and I'll have to just press Control z real quick. and. Yeah, I do that quite a bit, so I'm sorry if that bothers you, but anyway, I guess we can get started now. Let's just bring the opacity of the sketch down. I'd say that's good right there. And we'll make a new layer. And we can get started. Let me just move my microphone a little bit, give me some more room. Hopefully you guys can still hear me pretty well. And the sound is not too panned over to one side, if you know what I mean. Okay. The brush size down. Something a little more thin, something like that, probably. <laughs> okay. So here we go. Sometimes I'm not too confident in my own line art. It's, it can be pretty irritating at times. Having to undo this many times. Something 
that I like in uh, Manga Studio is the stabilization feature. So let's turn that on and give it a try. It's kind of hard to explain how this works. It's a lot better if you try it out yourself and you'll see how it can really benefit your line art. Makes your lines a lot more smooth. But things don't go all over the place. some changes here and there compared to the sketch. I'll just now start to notice some things wrong. For example over here, um, I need to make the goggles a little more thick in this area, I would say. Sometimes I'll undo even though when even when there's no problem. It's just a habit of mine. It's really tough drawing a circle. I would usually use something like the pen tool, but um, Photoshop is a lot better for that in my opinion program doesn't have doesn't really have much in terms of not what you call it, path tools I'm not sure if you're familiar with the path tool but how it works is you just create the shape you want I mean it gives you a lot of templates create the shape and it makes this line you know that makes up the shape but it's not actually a part of the picture you have to um, set the anchors along the lines and shape the lines in any way you want and then just stroke it by right clicking and then choosing the stroke option in this program I don't think that exists and that's kind of a shame but I do have Photoshop, so if I ever really need to um, use a path tool, I can just move the picture over, because Manga Studio does let you save in a PSD format. That's always nice. Yeah, these goggles are tough. I don't think they even look the same when it comes to width. Even with the perspective, that doesn't look right. So let me just make change real quick. There we go. looks decent so far. It's kind of strange, honestly, but Get some detail here.
The longer strokes can be pretty tricky. Such as what I did with the ear there. It's not exact, but I'm not too worried about that. As long as the shape is similar. to the eye it doesn't look strange to me maybe make it not so not so big want to make his lashes too thick there's little details Once again, starting to get bothered by the head shape along the muzzle. I guess that's fine. Okay, let's move on. Make this line look less flat to um, just give the impression of cloth tearing away. Making some good progress. Haven't come across too many problems so far. Thank you. 
the belt um, off for now. I'm gonna finish this arm right here. The belt's gonna be pretty tricky, I think. But with the design and all. We've got another circle. You know, those are fun. More often than not, I like to keep the picture zoomed out, like this, rather than zooming in this much. Just because there's less space to cover on the tablet, but for certain cases, I'll just zoom in like this. I might be pressing down a little too hard and it is already starting to hurt let's just bring up the brush size a bit I think 8 should be better Okay, on to the belt. Perhaps the design should be saved for when we get to the shading on the coloring. I think that'd be better. I'm gonna be keeping this sketch until the end, I believe. Oh, I'm getting tired of these circles. They're everywhere. See what we got so far. Take off the sketch. Hmm. 
on his shoulder there. I don't think we have to draw it over here. Maybe, yeah, let's just do it. Put a curved line right here. It's a little subtle, but it could probably be there. So we've got the perspective thing going on. Arm might look a little too long, though, compared to this one. We'll just... We'll just move on. It's not highly offensive. <laughs> I'd say we're doing pretty decent on time so far. I think one of the most fun things uh, in drawing a character for me are drawing folds on clothing. I wouldn't say I'm a master at that just yet, <laughs> but it is pretty fun compared to everything else. Uh, hold on, let's, let's draw the ends of his gloves over here. They are fingerless. At least, are they? Yeah, they should be. Yeah, my line art is not the cleanest, definitely. If I was using a path tool, it would be a lot cleaner. That's what a lot of people seem to use. I tend to go for doing it like this because it is quite a bit faster for me. If I were to practice some more with the path tool, I'm sure I can um, get my time down, but as of right now, I don't really have time to practice that, so. But yeah, that will definitely just make your line art look a lot cleaner. Because you're pretty much uh, stroking out the line through a predetermined line. That you're not, you know, actually moving your hand to draw out. Kind of hard to explain, but hopefully you get what I mean. Uh, let's draw another line down his pants over here. Erase the sketch again. I guess it's all right. Make his chest a little fuzzier. He's a man. Uh, right. Going back through before we get to the shoes. See if I'm missing anything. Okay, these little uh, little ring things over here, they should be a lot thicker, it looks like.
I'm not gonna beat myself up over the design of the shoes. I feel that they're off, but... Yeah, not a huge deal in this instance. Although, there should be a design on them. Let's see. Well, I can't see it in this picture. See in this one, maybe? No, nope, they cut off his legs. What a shame. Well, when we get to the, um, the shading, maybe I'll just go over it again. Okay, that looks like it for the most part. For the line art at least. Got that done in less than 30 minutes. But let's just go back over and see if we need to change anything. Anything that looks wrong. I mean, something always looks wrong, but... <laughs> get what I mean. Something that looks... Very off. It looks weird, but that's because I suck at drawing circles on my own. Hmm. Need to make sure all the line art is closed up. So we can more easily fill in the whole thing with color. Looks like... Uh, I'm using the magic wand tool, by the way with W. Um, looking outside of the line art, it looks like there are no gaps, but you do have the option of closing a gap over here. I don't think there is such an option in Photoshop. Maybe it's the tolerance value? I'm not sure. But yeah, there is that. It's pretty helpful. So I think our line art is nice and closed. Over it one last time. I mean, as long as we follow the sketch for the most part, and as long as we're happy with the sketch, uh, finishing this line art shouldn't take too much time. Okay. I think that's good. So we can go in and. Uh, what color do I want for the background? Let's see. Maybe we could do a gradient, although I haven't really experimented with this. Oops. Hmm. Let's make a new layer um, towards the bottom. Hmm. The fade doesn't seem to. The fade seems to be pretty uh, small. Okay, what's the step of angle? Maybe that's what I'm looking for. I don't know. I think we're going to have to manually go in here and uh, change the darker colors in the gradient. Something a little more smooth instead of going right to black. This change minimum unit of line direction and whether using it. Okay. Try it again. Mm. 
maybe a little too bright. Keep doing the wrong direction. Eh, that is good enough for me. Let's go ahead and fill King Cosma up with white. Although with the blue reflection on the ground, blue color. Yeah, the blue will reflect up towards him, I believe. If my understanding of lighting is correct. So he'll have a bit of a blue, bluish white going on. Let's see if I can. First, let's select the line art, obviously. Get rid of the sketch real quick. Select the line art. Gotta select this portion too. This one right here. Okay, looks good to me. There's a button down here to invert the selected area. That's this one right here, the second button. Just click that, and the marquee will um, pretty much select his entire body. But we're not ready to fill it in just yet, because if we fill it in like this, the color will leak out towards the edge of the line art here. Let me do that real quick and I'll show you what I mean. Uh, make a new layer down here for color. Let's rename that. Although I'm gonna make layers for all the different uh, colors. But still, just an example. Get a nice bluish tint on the white here and Fill it up. I'd say that's maybe a good tone. Maybe a little more blue. Saturated. That's looking better. I don't want to make him too blue. But I do want him to fit in with the background a lot better. I'd say that's fine. Anyway. Save the picture. I don't think we've done that for a while. Yeah, make it habit of saving, definitely. Uh, let's deselect this with control D and I'll show you what I mean. If you... Well, I guess that isn't too bad. It's not leaking out as much as I thought it would. Yeah, that's not too bad, actually. But I've made a habit of... What do you call it? I guess contracting the marquee. Let's undo. There you go. Contracting the marquee, and you can do that with uh, this right here, shrinking the selected area. Click that, and I usually just do a couple pixels for a picture like this. And it'll shrink the selection. So your coloring will definitely be under the line art and you won't have anything pouring out from the sides. But I think this actually looks pretty good. Okay, awesome. Now this isn't this isn't necessarily white. <laughs> but I'm gonna name it white anyway because that's the color of his fur normally. So that's the base color for me. I guess next up we will start to just 
learn everything else. I try to give it a bluish tint as well. So we'll start with his ears. I'll make a new layer called brown. And let's see. In order to stay inside of the base color, we're going to control click the picture in the white layer and it'll select all the pixels that have been filled up. So if we want to color it, um, we'll never go outside of that. We'll go back up to brown, we can do the eyedropper tool and get that color. Increase the brush size and... I don't like how pressing G brings up the gradient first. <laughs> but there you go. Since there is going to be a bluish tint, of course, the brown needs to get a bit of blue in it. You can bring the brush density down. Uh, that doesn't do much, actually. Here's a shading brush that I made myself. This should serve useful. I'm just lightly tapping here, and we're getting a bit of a blue on this brown. So once we get that, we can just fill everything else up. I'm gonna use the pencil tool for this one. I'm going to lock the transparent layers by pressing this button right here. There we go. And see, when we color it like this, it won't go outside of the brown. Now you can see that there's this weird line here. It didn't fill it up all the way when we used the paint bucket tool, so... back to the pence and we're just gonna turn this button back off so that we can actually fill this in there we go and get rid of that ugly line and you notice this little um, gap here in the brown so I guess we can just erase a portion of that get it right there we go okay now of course you don't really have to put this much effort into trying to get the tone right something else you can do is use a color correction tool but I haven't I haven't really looked around much to find this option and see if it's in manga studio it probably is Edit, maybe? Tonal correction, color balance, there we go. That'll usually change it. So you can just drag these sliders. Okay, we're, yeah, we're affecting the brown. So if you drag it slightly to the red portion, it'll affect the entire color layer. So, yeah, that is actually a lot easier than trying to just um, mix the color in as if you're actually painting. If you like that, by all means, go ahead and do it, but the color balance can save you a lot of time. So we're just going to do that from now on. Now, what are we going to do next? The goggles. I'd say that's a good point to start on. What is this? Is it like a blue-gray? That's what it seems like to me. Hmm. Maybe we can select the 
line art like this. That'll probably be easier. I'm gonna expand the selection by like two pixels or something. I'm gonna fill it up. No, not like that. We have to click the blue gray layer and then fill it up so it doesn't overlap the line art. But there you go. up all the spaces that it missed. It seems like the same color is for the glass on the goggles. Let's go ahead and select these as well. And we can go ahead and select everything else if we want. I guess that's it though. Expand it by... oops. Two pixels. Just fill it up. Or you can just press this paint bucket tool to fill everything up. Or everything that you selected. Looking pretty decent so far. You can really see the sloppiness of the line art the closer you zoom in. Oh well. Select these next, and this is a lighter gray color. We'll make another layer. Just call it gray. Go ahead and select everything else too. I guess that would also apply for the gloves and such. Shoes and that sort of thing. I'd say that looks fine. Okay. I'm gonna expand that by two and let's fill it in. Once again, I messed up. Click the gray layer and then fill it up. There you go. Okay. I suppose we can do the eye next, and I'll just give an entirely new layer for the eye. For the whole eye itself, I should say. Give it a very slightly gray tone. Like he has a red eye, so. Just go ahead and select a nice red over here and. Uh oh. Once again. There. Pick red again. Hmm. It's not hard enough. There you go. Let's bring up the sketch again to... So we know where to put his iris and all that good stuff. Let's paint it in. Okay. Well, I guess we can put in the pupil as well. Hmm. It's, it's kind of bright for a pupil, I guess. If that's the case... And also... His entire iris looks pretty small, actually. Let's just undo all that and try again. I 
Maybe that's actually just a reflection. I'm just gonna paint it black. There we go. That's good for the eye, I'd say. His nose looks a little, a little brown. So we're just gonna go back to the brown layer and fill up the nose like that. Whoops. Let's take this color. Okay, a little, a little darker. Okay, um, on to his jacket. Nice red. A new layer, just call it red, and select the line art. Hopefully this won't be too much of a pain. Looks like it might be, but we'll pull through. Doesn't look like I'm going to get everything, but we will get most of it. Okay, we're going to have to come in here and fill in all the spots we missed. I'm going to select the white layer so that we don't go outside of the line art. Let's get rid of all the leaks that we have here. As far as quite a bit of patience. Okay, that looks pretty good, although we do have to shade the inside of his jacket as well. So what I'm going to do is just select this portion and get a darker shade. That, let's say that's good. Let's fill that in. Just get some nice depth. Nice depth in there. Uh, we're missing the bandages. Let's go ahead and get that over with. We can use brown. You know, if you're making too many layers, feel free to use the same one that has a color pretty close to what you're using. It's easier just to paint it in manually, so I can go ahead and do that. Turn stabilization off just to give more free movement. I want to paint this portion black real quick. There you go. Select the white layer. be all the bandages. Oh man. Just need to stretch a little bit. This is quite exhausting at times. 
But we're almost done. At least with this video. Okay, on to the belt. I suppose. Yeah. Take the line art. And that by two. Hmm. This is this is kind of a ugly yellow, so I'm just gonna saturate it a little more. That should be good. A new layer called gold, I guess. Fill it up. Gold is leaking into the red, so I might want to erase that. And this portion, since it's uh, kind of under the jacket, I feel the need to make it a little darker. So we're going to lock the transparent layers, and there you go. Next thing we can do is fill in these uh, little orbs here, or whatever. <laughs> is it really worth making another layer? You know what, I'm gonna use the brown layer for this one. Okay, back to gold. Get these little portions right here. Erase that. Okay, like I said in the uh, like I said before, in the shading portion, we'll just go over the more detailed areas. This video is going on for quite some time already, so I don't want to have it go on for too long. Okay, this part of his glove is a red, so... And that... And we can do... These parts similar to the goggles. I'm still not sure what these are supposed to be for. I guess it looks kind of cool. Uh, expand. What color what was it? This is the gray. So go down to the gray layer. Fill that up. Very nice. Okay, on to the pants. We're almost done, guys. Zoom out. I guess this is a a blue gray as well. I don't know. It seems like there's a bit of blue in there. Might just be me, but anyway. Go ahead and select all this. Nice and colorful. I sometimes find coloring to be pretty tedious, but most of the time it's definitely worth it in the end. This brings a lot more life to the picture, but that that goes without saying. I'm filling this spot. Oh, that's strange. Let's go to the gray and probably just... Yeah, there you go. Okay, one last thing. We need to fill in the insides of these, uh... 
these strange ring things down like this. Looking good. I guess I can do a couple more things before we end this video. Since I notice a lot of people, um... What do you call it? Imitate the movie designed by giving his line art a red color. I guess we can do the same here. It would make it more familiar to people who are fans of the show. I guess I should say the movie. So, we can just paint over this real quick and see what it looks like. It looks a little ugly in my opinion. <laughs> hmm, this one looks like it's been executed a lot better. Perhaps because it doesn't have nearly as much detail. I mean, I guess it looks kind of cool. I guess my line art might be a little too thick, so it's... It's just a lot more showy. For the lack of a better word. I guess these little bruises here don't really need to be painted red. Man, it looks so much better in this picture than in my picture. Hmm. I'm gonna have to go over this in the future. Maybe it's because of the way the red collides with the blue. Since a lot of his body is consisting of the blue right now, so... Yeah, it's kind of understandable. So let's just set it... Set it back to black. And what we'll do is take the white I'll just make his fur more white. Still having that bluish tone to it. I guess we can try again, although... Let's make a bit of a, a darker red, just a little bit. That blends in way too much with the jacket, so just bring it up to the bright, the brighter red. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, it'll definitely look better when we get to the shading, most definitely, but since at the moment, it looks like a bit of an eyesore, in my opinion. We're just going to set it back to black for now and just call that final for this video. Just one last thing. I'm going to make, even though the background isn't very detailed, I want to make these little lines here glow and have a cool little effect and do a nice purple or one of the lines at least I'll just make another layer for that hmm maybe instead of making it all in one brush we could do it like that yeah I'd say that's definitely better and then just fill it up 
if you have a redder or somewhat magenta looking. I'd say it looks pretty cool. What do you think? There's sky blue. For this last line over here. And we'll try to incorporate the glow against his body as well. Okay. I promise one last thing. I guess we can do an airbrush. Just to um, overlay the lines to give them that glow effect. Let's see. Hmm. It's gonna be a little tougher with the way the lines um, get skinnier as they go along. How am I gonna do this? Let me bring the brush size down a bit and just go along the edge. Yeah, I'd say that looks good. Let's get rid of the sketch. Oops. Get rid of the sketch to make it less distracting. There you go. And like this. Pretty cool. Just something a little subtle. Hmm. Very tempting to make sort of a grid pattern on the ground. Maybe we don't have to do that. We can give the sense of a surface by making it a little reflective maybe and having uh, King Cosma's reflection like around this portion going down. We could do that in some other part. But there you go, there's the line art, there's the base coloring. And I haven't got around gotten around to the symbol on purpose, because I'm not entirely sure that's how it looks. But of course there are some inaccuracies to the show, it's just um, partially my style and just I like to make things a little different from the source material. It just comes naturally sometimes as well. But yeah, um, Oh, something we forgot to do is change the color tone of of this to make it a little more blue to blend in with the background better, but we don't have to do that right now. This video has gone on for about an hour, so I'm just going to close it here. Thanks guys for watching this part. Um, if you enjoyed this, please give it a like, and I will see you in the next part of this Let's Draw. Thank you for watching.